Fun fact, before I settled on getting this Gar Saxon Imperial Super Commando helmet, I actually wanted to buy Tech's helmet. But Tech was such a new and obscure character that nobody was making 3D models of his helmet at the time that I was looking for one. But now his crew has an entire show to themselves, so I think Gar Saxon is going to be the more obscure character now. Which probably works to my benefit, but I digress. The Bad Batch is here, and it feels like a nice continuation of the final season of The Clone Wars, complete with outstanding animation and a more adult tone compared to some of the episodes found in the first season of The Clone Wars. Wrecker did annoy me a little bit in the first episode because his character often broke the more serious tone that I'm talking about, but this is an animation on Disney+, Plus, so I don't expect the show to be as dark as Rogue One or anything. I'm just hoping that the rest of this series will keep in line with that tone and not devolve into a show that aims exclusively at children. Because I've tried to get some of my friends into watching The Clone Wars, and all of them have had a hard time with getting through that silly and childish first season. But I do think the Bad Batch could potentially be a better entry point into Star Wars animation. Or I guess I could just tell my friends to start with Star Wars Rebels, since I do prefer that show over The Clone Wars. I know that may be blasphemous to some people, but that's just my opinion, damn it. And it's because of that reason that I was totally hyped to see a young Kanan in the first episode. Knowing where his character ends up is one thing, but seeing how betrayed and lost he must have felt as a young kid was just something else. Kanan is actually one of my favorite Star Wars characters, so I really enjoyed his inclusion in this story. And his scene works for anyone who is unfamiliar with his character too. I'll admit that his voice sounded a little weird to me because I don't know how young he's supposed to be, but whatever, that's a minor nitpick. I enjoyed the rest of the voice acting in this episode, mainly because D. Bradley Baker is clearly having a fun time providing all of these voices. And wouldn't it have been funny if he provided the voice for the girl clone as well? I think he would have had a good time with that. But I love Omega's clear Australian accent, so I wouldn't want that changed. I'm curious to see what her role in the overarching narrative will be since we don't know what happens to her or what happens to the rest of the Bad Batch, but I'm excited to find out because I've always, always, always wanted to know what happens to the clone troopers once the Imperial Stormtroopers arrive. What was that transition of power like? Were the clones displaced or even killed? And what happened to the Kaminoans? I don't know, but I'm glad to see that Tarkin is involved with all of this. It makes sense that a new bureaucracy would want to reevaluate its organizations based on efficiency and costs. So yeah, I really dug the first episode of The Bad Batch. The second episode, however, felt a little inconsequential. Hunter learns that he's a little in over his head by caring for Omega, but that's about it. The episode basically ends where it started, and that's what worries me about this show. With 14 episodes left in the season, I really hope the narrative doesn't drag itself on. I couldn't get into The Clone Wars as it was airing because of that exact reason. And though I do enjoy a handful of arcs from The Clone Wars now, I still contend that a lot of those episodes are inconsequential and unimportant. So how will The Bad Batch fare by comparison? I don't know, I guess we'll have to wait out these next 14 weeks to find out. But until then, thanks for watching.